Good afternoon, everyone. That is what with us in Rio uh, Pipeline today. It's a pleasure to have you all here for our table on the contribution of pipelines for decarbonization and for climate targets. I am very well in very good company today. We have Eloisa Borges Esteves from uh, EPE. We have uh, Francisco, Francisco de la Flor from uh, Enagas. And we have uh, Jute Neto from Transpetro. And I'm gonna present each of them when, they, when we call them for their presentations. We're gonna start by Eloisa, uh, who's gonna be giving us uh, a, a, a wide information, global information on the, on the theme. And each of our members in the table is gonna have their remarks. And at the end, we're gonna have a debate among us and also take questions from the, from the audience. So Eloisa is a very renowned uh, specialist in the energy regulation. She has over 20 years experience on this, in the sector. She has written several scientific articles, uh, chapters of books related to the energy economy regulation and uh, competition uh, uh, defense. She is a reviewer of several international magazines, a doctor in economics and a lawyer, also with post-graduations in uh, public law. She's also a visitor researcher in the law school of the University of Virginia. And she's a member of the Columbia U Women's Leadership Program from the University of Columbia. Columbia. She's a uh, 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 public employee in the National and uh, Petroleum uh, agency of Brazil, ANP, and since May 2020, she's the director in, of studies for petroleum, natural gas, and biofuels from the uh, company of uh, energy planning of Brazil called EP. Eloisa, the floor is yours. Welcome. Thank you very much, Viviana. Good afternoon. Good afternoon for my, my panel my colleagues who are here in the panel with me. I'll try to share my presentation. We always practice, but usually when we go live, something happens. So uh, are you seeing the presentation? Yes. Well, yes. Uh, thanks Hill Pipeline for the invitation. Uh, we, I, I think it's an excellent team for the, the current week or the current uh, past uh, uh, Few, few days where the world is debating climate change and uh, climate change uh, mitigation efforts. So uh, I, will, I will go to present some of our views on how can we contribute the oil and gas industry in general, natural gas uh, in, in particular, and what's the contribution for uh, transportation. So it's no secret that the world context uh, shows us that we are transitioning to a, a low carbon uh, economy, uh, not only because of climate change, the need of climate change uh, 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 control efforts, uh, but because we are seeing the search for new energy sources, uh, very volatile fuel prices, uh, a geopolitical environment that tends to be uh, uh, more complex. And also things, they, they, they happen while we are doubling or, or accelerating our efforts towards uh, reducing local and global emissions, but at the same time, guaranteeing energy security. It's a very complex uh, equation. And the question is, how do we get there? How do we guarantee uh, a sustainable development? How do we provide energy for a growing uh, global population while decarbonizing our energy sector uh, at accept acceptable costs for the society? Uh, here in, in Brazil, we have been talking uh, about a fair transition for quite a while, but uh, when we look at the energy markets, it's quite clear 
that fortunately for Brazil, we are starting from a very uh, uh, advantage point. We already have a, a half renewable energy matrix. Uh, so although energy markets are responsible for around 75% of global emissions, Brazil itself, it's less than 3%. Our energy industry is already very uh, uh, decarbonized, if you will. Uh, when we look globally, fossil fuels amount for around 80% of the world primary uh, energy in the world energy matrix. In Brazil, it's around 50%. Uh, millions and millions of people still don't have access to energy. So we have to consider that we have to include those people include uh, them in the energy sec uh, in the energy sector and in doing so providing access to clean energy so that's a great challenge and we must not forget that the world's going to grow economy by 2050 is going to double and the world population will probably reach more than 9 billion people so we will need more energy. The world will need more energy. All the energy we can get to sustain our development. The key point is how do we how do we guarantee that the marginal energy uh, uh, um, cell or the, the or each time we consume more energy, uh, we reduce our carbon intensity, our carbon footprint. Uh, sorry. So uh, part of the answer is energy transition, but energy, energy transition is not a linear uh, process. It's not a one size fits all solution. Energy transition, in fact, it's a process that uh, involves several aspects. The, re the, 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 the search for sustainable development, uh, fighting climate change, but how do we get the innovation, the technological innovations that we need to get us there? Advancing on digitalization, using all our resources in a more efficient way. In fact, the fastest way to reduce uh, uh, carbon emissions is to be more efficient so that we can have more energy uh, delivered with less fuel use. And of course, the source for uh, low carbon energy sources and electrification. Um, there's a technological uh, uh, race, there's a technological race, and we have several routes, several alternatives to get all those goals uh, in, in, in all the, to get to, to reach all those goals. And what we see at EPE is that uh, uh, we, we still can gain a lot accelerating competitive gains from learning curves, uh, advancing on scale economies, and, and of course, adopting uh, 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 carbon uh, control measures. How is Brazil in all that scenario? Brazil is a great producer of oil and natural gas. We intend to remain a, a, a big player in the oil and gas production scenario. Uh, we uh, are already, we are, we, in 2019, we, we uh, exported around 1.2 1, 1 million barrels of oil per day. That number is, is higher. We already produce more than 2 million barrels per day. We expect to reach 5 million by the end of this decade and uh, to be one of the, uh, the fifth uh, biggest uh, exporter of oil, oil mainly. Uh, and why am, why am I talking about oil? Because oil and gas, the oil and gas industry will play a key role in the decarbonization so we we, we got to keep that in mind key key message is here the world will need energy oil and gas can contribute to that natural gas i'll say that a little bit later is a key player but the oil and gas industry in general must be on board because it will still be important, uh, because the oil and gas industry has the money and the technical capability to help the world 
in in uh, in looking for uh, low carbon or zero carbon technologies and to help us uh, migrate migrate uh, move towards uh, a clean energy matrix the global energy matrix will transform but we will need lots of efforts and investments so in the short term reducing emissions is imperative for the oil and gas industry to keep operating their carbonization is no longer an option it's actually a, a, a mandatory goal if we want to keep our social license to operate if we want to keep in the business we want to keep as one of the key uh, energy providers of the world uh, when we talk about operations, oil and gas operations amount for 15% uh, of global emissions for the energy sector. This is a, a, a graph from the energy information, uh, 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 from the Energy uh, International Energy Agency. Uh, and it shows that transportation, although uh, when we put on perspective, uh, we have a uh, 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 flaring energy uh, as and, and crude transportation and refining as the main uh, 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 responsible uh, uh, segments for for emissions. We still have uh, we we, do, we cannot forget about transportation. Well, uh, and how can we get there? What should we do? Uh, the first thing is to search for not only low cost, but low emissions portfolios. Many companies are already, already uh, uh, putting that goal in their energy, uh, in their strategic planning. Uh, reducing leaks, uh, vents and flaring, especially on gas. Uh, strategies and technologies to capture and, and storage CO2. Uh, vapor, vapor uh, recuperation equipment, vapor recuperation can help us gain intensity, reduce fuel, uh, the, the fuel, the, the amount of fuel we use, so uh, it can help us uh, decarbonize our operations. The search for more uh, energy efficiency, uh, reducing energy demand, so, te so technological innovations that uh, will require less fuels for the same amount of uh, effort, and searching, trying to use uh, uh, carbon neutral or low carbon uh, sources. When we look at that, natural gas has an opportunity, but also combining hybrid forms so we, we are seeing around the uh, um, research on solutions like the electrification of operations. So using solar power to power uh, 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 our operations, use wind to power operations. So that's a way to, to try to decarbonize our matrix while still uh, using oil and gas. For uh, uh, pipeline transportation in particular, uh, why is it important to think of that? Uh, globally and specifically for Brazil, natural gas is one of our key, uh, 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 our key strategies for energy transition because it allows for fossil fuel substitution in the short term. Uh, we have to, to uh, uh, keep in mind that the world still uses lots of coal, so natural gas can and will contribute on that. And while Brazil do, do not use a significant amount of coal, uh, while the world uses around 30% of coal still, Brazil, that number is around uh, 3%, so, but, but we still use lots of wood, and uh, fuel oil, diesel in many operations and industries. So converting for natural gas can and will help us uh, uh, reaching uh, uh, our decarbonization goals. And in the medium and long term, we can think of combined strategies to use to, to, to combine natural gas with uh, biomethane 
and therefore reducing uh, 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 our emissions. Uh, we will be Mike, we will be moving towards a, a renewable fuel uh, source. And in the medium to long term, we can combine uh, our natural gas strategy with hydrogen strategy, uh, reducing uh, in a energy planning perspective, our risk of technological lock-in. So we can keep investing, for instance, in natural gas pipelines. If we keep in mind that in the long term, uh, they, they might be, uh, there might be a, a, a synergy with hydrogen. Uh, what are the challenges? Uh, how can we, how can, so the, the, the main, question that was posed in the beginning of the panel, how can the pipeline sector contribute for reducing emissions, contribute for climate change? And I believe we will see more specific uh, 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 contributions the following presentations. Uh, the first and easiest way is to be more efficient in the use of our transportation, our pipeline infrastructure. Uh, optimizing energy consumption in the operation of the system, uh, changing fuels, choosing uh, different fuels in the operation of the system can help us a lot, reducing emissions in this specific sector. Uh, there are already uh, technological research and advances in uh, enhancing um, material resilience. Uh, that can extend the operational life cycle of the infrastructure, uh, reduce uh, leakages, reduce the risk of leaks, so uh, therefore reducing emissions. So we, we have some, some, some advances on that. Also, digitalization goes towards efficiency, uh, uh, leakage, and more uh, optimizing the infrastructure but also goes towards uh, better technologies to detect, to detect leaks and, and reduce, uh, uh, reduce waste in, uh, uh, in our operations. So the digitalization and more efficientization, I don't know if that word exists, but those are key aspects of how in the very short term, the pipeline sector can contribute. Uh, as a final remarks, uh, when we talk about uh, energy transition, climate change and, and, and uh, uh, decarbonization, we have to keep in mind that energy is completely associated to environmental aspects, but it is the, the, the main force of socioeconomic development. We have to keep in mind that our end goal is achieve a sustainable development, uh, achieve equality, achieve clean energy uh, access, achieve affordable clean energy. So uh, uh, all of those goals, they're not uh, uh, measures on itself. They are goals that we are uh, uh, we have to reach uh, uh, sustainable development uh, and. Those things, they will be the, the, the main uh, guidelines for the energy question in the, future, in the future. We have to keep in mind that we, we might, if we do not change, change might reach us and will reach us, in fact. Most nations, Brazil included, will keep the energy agenda uh, associated to the climate agenda. So we want uh, to reduce our energy costs, reduce our energy risk. Uh, so we want energy security. At the same time, we, we need to decarbonize. Uh, natural gas amongst fossil fuels is one of the is, is the one that has a lower specific emission and among all the uh, transportation uh, different uh, solutions that we have for natural gas pipelines is one of the most efficient uh, the one that consumes less energy and has lower specific emissions so 
pipelines themselves are already a choice towards uh, climate, uh, towards uh, uh, decarbonization. Uh, natural gas, and why do we have to insist on natural gas? And why should we keep on that track? Because natural gas can and will facilitate our transition to lower uh, emission fuels. Uh, either towards a, a, a mix with hydrogen, either if you use biomethane, or in the long, long term, if we go from natural gas from towards blue hydrogen, and then we go, we move to green hydrogen and use biomethane, we can even have negative emissions. So a world of opportunities that I, I, I do not, I, I believe I've, I've extended my time, but we have lots of things to, to think about and to keep our opportunities in mind. We have to keep uh, 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 thinking about natural gas as an instrument to reach a lower carbon, a lower carbon economy. Uh, in the pipeline sector, since it is already one of the most efficient and the natural choice, one, when these kind of considerations are made, the challenge is to is to to search a more efficient use of infrastructure, uh, while uh, searching for better technologies to reduce leakage risks and uh, uh, and uh, uh, point out and, and discover leakages uh, quickly. I would like to thank my team that helped me uh, mapping everything and consolidating in one single presentation. And I'd like to thank the organization and IBP for the invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Eloisa. It was very insightful. And uh, I think most people don't uh, don't think much about the carbon efficiency of infrastructure and in brazil we have uh, a very high consumption of fuel for a unit of gdp which means like the the transport infrastructure is let's say heavy in the in the production costs of brazil and so in that sense it is interesting to think that infrastructure projects are actually decarbonization projects because if they can improve the efficiency of the economy they they can be more effective at reducing the carbon profile of the country than things that we discuss much why much more uh commonly than than low carbon fuels for instance so obviously all of the levers are necessary but infrastructure is maybe something that is currently is usually downplayed and it's going to be very interesting to have that in our in our in the continuation of our conversation. So I will now uh, call uh, Francisco de la Flor. Uh, he has more than thirty five years experience in the energy and gas sectors in several companies, areas, and responsibilities. Uh, his main current international positions are as chair of the group of experts. Uh, on gas in the United Nations, member of the Executive Committee and Council of the International Gas Union, and member of the board uh, or executive board on several organizations. As education, he's a chemical engineer and he's also uh, from economic science and business administration. Francisco, it's a pleasure to share the panel with you. The floor is yours. Obrigado, Viviana. I'm just um, I'm going also to try to share my my, my screen um, here uh, and here. I hope that this is works. Yeah. Does it work? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, uh, apologies for not addressing in, in Portuguese, uh, Brasileiro. I'm, I'm very sorry. That's triggering all the others to, to uh, speak in English. Um, uh, Thanks, thanks for, for the invitation eh, and the opportunity to, to be with you. I'm, uh, the, the first uh, presentation was uh, uh, so interesting that uh, I, I don't know if I will be at the same, at the same level. Um, 
let me uh, uh, just um, um, share. Um, I, I have uh, I have titled this presentation as commitment to the energy, energy transition. Um, I think that uh, uh, complements uh, quite well with our case what Eloisa has already said. Then, um, uh, yeah, here um, let me uh, just um, uh, say some words about my, my company. Uh, my company is uh, in a gas. Uh, was incorporated in 1972 to carry out the gasification process in, in, in Spain during three decades. Was responsible for importing, um, uh, just uh, transporting and uh, delivering and selling gas to distribution companies and the indus industrial consumers. Uh, as from 2001, and following the uh, European um, uh, Directive, uh, our, um, our uh, task, our sole task is to, to provide basic gas infrastructure services. And uh, our assets are regasification terminals, underground gas storages, and uh, transmission uh, pipelines. All of them are uh, managed um, following um, uh, regulated uh, approach. Um, uh, our headquarters are, are located here in Madrid, eh, uh, as well as uh, at the main assets in, in Spain. Once our gas uh, system was mature, we started the inter internationalization process eh, to perform uh, the, the same uh, activities, uh, but also abroad today. Our interest, our assets are in, in other eight countries uh, in Europe and in North and, and South America. Then uh, um, on um, sustainability. On sustainability, I have to say that uh, it is today is a, a key priority of uh, our strategy. Uh, the, uh, the commitment to the energy transition is based on these uh, three pillars, the energy efficiency, and uh, emission reductions. So Eloisa, <laughs> I'm following what you said. Um, uh, people and culture is the second, and, and then the role of natural gas and renewable gases in the energy model. Uh, methane, we, we have um, uh, declared, we have uh, committed to achieve carbon neutrality by, by 2040. Um, and uh, following uh, a pathway that, uh, 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 that has already started, of course, that started, I would say, uh, almost one decade ago, so that a uh, substantial part of our greenhouse gas emissions uh, reduction has already been uh, achieved. And um, also, Eloisa mentioned uh, uh, methane emissions. I will devote several slides uh, to, this, uh, to this topic, which is one of my favorite. I participate uh, several times per week in, in events uh, to speak about uh, methane emissions. Um, methane emissions, uh, as I said, uh, since uh, 2013 and until 2020, we have reduced our methane footprint by 60, 62%, being 78% uh, uh, fugit emissions and 37 uh, bent emissions. And uh, the, the pillars of uh, our uh, methane emissions uh, strategy are, are, are those as the implementing the implementation of best available techniques and improvements uh, of, of, of that accuracy, research and, and development efforts, including collaboration with academia and many and several uh, international um, uh, projects uh, uh, and associations, uh, which is um, uh, probably uh, the best way to um, to push and to uh, to contribute uh, to to work all together uh, and leverage uh, our uh, capacities. Then uh, our C, uh, CH4 emissions targets are aligned with the UN Global Methane Alliance. So by uh, 2025, we'll be reduced by 45%, and by 2030 by 60 percent, uh, compared with what we had in uh, 2015. Then. We are particularly proud eh, eh, to have um, eh, to have to have been uh, granted, I'd say, with this label, the gold standard, and eh, gold standard by by UNEP, eh, gold standard in methane emissions. Um, uh, they, they say that uh, yes, literally. I, let me read that in the in the midstream segment, Enagas, uh, a company with global operations, submitted one of the most accurate 
plans to mitigate emissions, including data for not operated assets and the deployment of technologies for direct measurements in the midstream sector. Enagas developed one of the best implementation plans with a clear pathways and aggressive targets to reduce emissions in both operated and operated and not operated access. The plan includes a complete description of methodologies and technologies plan for use in coming years to achieve the level four or five of reporting. This was uh, published a few days ago. Momentum, a couple of, of uh, slides just to speak about the momentum. Uh, some key initiatives here. We are based in Europe, and in Europe, in, in uh, mid December, it is announced to to uh, uh, to uh, uh, um, issue um, a legislative proposal on methane emissions. Uh, methane just uh, that will have a, a very strong impact on our operations and also uh, impact on uh, potential impact on the, on the let's say external uh, European Union. Um, just uh, to mention four, uh, three or four initiatives that are uh, uh, paramount, just uh, this methane tracker uh, from the uh, International Energy Agency. This uh, another document uh, just uh, to, to uh, address the pathway to 75 cut um, by 2030. This is called Carteling uh, Methane Emissions from Fossil Fuel Operations. The Oil and Gas Methane Partnership and, and uh, last, just to mention some of them, on rules to prevent methane uh, leakage. Um, next, uh, next is um, uh, on the momentum, a uh, mm, couple of, uh, of uh, key points. Just the implementation of this EMEO, the International uh, Methane Emissions Observatory, was uh, launched to, to boost action on the powerful uh, climate warming uh, gas. This is the one that has uh, published the report I mentioned before. It's on the left-hand side. And second is something that uh, you absolutely, I, I'm, I'm sure you, you hear several times in the past few days uh, and during the, this COP25, uh, 26 and before, the launch by uh, U, uh, United States and European Union and partners on the Global Methane Pledge to keep 1.5 within, uh, within reach. Eh? And more than 100 countries uh, representing 70% of the global economy have now joined it. I, I, I don't know if uh, what a Brazil is in is in, a, in the pledge. Um, one uh, key document that uh, could be uh, interesting for the audience to um, to visit and download is a, a paper we have prepared. I mean, a, a report, uh, 200 pages, potential ways on uh, how the gas industry can contribute to reductions of methane emissions, was uh, done with the contribution of. Um, uh, a um, big number of, uh, of associations, of um, gas associations from EMP uh, to um, a utilization, including biogas, eh, biomethane, and of course, LNG. We know that uh, um, emissions, COP with emissions is not a new topic. Eh, uh, in the past was um, addressed for safety purposes. Uh, now is uh, the environmental uh, angle is the, the most relevant. So it's among uh, the top priorities of, of the industry. And also uh, the opportunity we see to contribute to reaching this, the uh, COP21 uh, uh, agreement um, uh, targets. Please, uh, here you, you have the, the um, uh, one of the uh, several web pages from, from where you can download this, this uh, state of the art paper. Um, Quick review on uh, some of the main industry publication on, of, and tools. Uh, a big amount of materials, uh, uh, material have been, has been produced in the past two, uh, three years in, uh, within the associations and initiatives uh, where we are active. Uh, just to mention, uh, this, uh, this is a, a sample of, of some of them. For instance, uh, guidelines for uh, target setting. Uh, Eldar uh, campaigns for uh, MRV, uh, measuring, reporting, and verification on ben venting and flooding. Uh, all of them are available. One, for instance, on, um, on uh, bottom right side, this is uh, uh, another one that was produced uh, within the uh, United Nations Economic Commission for Europe, where, as I, I, you, you told, um, uh, I'm, I'm the, the chair, I'm the president of the group of experts on gas. So, lot of papers, lot of available information, the state of the art, and uh, 
everything is available uh, for all of you um, that uh, for those of you that are interested. Last slide from my side. Um, yes, yeah, so to to refer how um, natural gas um, natural gas will be uh, progressively. Uh, been uh, let's say complemented or replaced by low carbon and and uh, renewable gases to achieve the uh, the carbon neutrality in a cost efficient way uh, uh, and again what Eloisa said I completely agree this will be uh, the cost efficient way is by the use uh, of gases this is not uh, about uh, uh, the carbonization is not electrification is not electrification and carbon neutrality to achieve carbon neutrality is not Estification is uh, just uh, um, gases uh, together with uh, or so molecules together with electrons are necessary to to reach that goal within the um, uh, the the uh, most uh, cost efficient way. Here, our company. What uh, is uh, our company uh, doing to go to towards that uh, direction? We we have in, we are involved in around fifty. Uh, 50 projects, eh? uh, actual projects, projects, uh, 30, 30 of them uh, hydrogen project, uh, 20 biomethane projects. Uh, just in addition to, uh, there are many others in, in Spain, but we are involved in these uh, 50 together with uh, around 50, uh, 50 partners, because uh, this is something that has to be uh, done uh, together among uh, the different partners. So, uh, six uh, criteria we are using to, to promote uh, these renewable gas projects uh, and uh, those criteria are linked to the ecological transition uh, first is the uh, contribution to the decarbonization and it is optimization the optimization uh, of cost uh, to to achieve uh, this inclusive transition second uh, they must be uh, drivers through their value chain third they must contribute to the development of uh, our industry, but but also together with uh, with our um, just foreign partners uh, global uh, to achieve the global goals. Uh, we have to uh, generate. We um, we would like to to generate um, um, sustainable employment. Has to be done again with with partners. This is not uh, alone. We, we this is public private partnership in many of them and from different segments and from different sectors. But all of them, all of us, uh, completely committed. And of course, um, we are a private company listed in the stock exchange. Our shareholders are pension funds and investment funds. And uh, in addition to sustainability criteria, they are. Uh, um, requesting us to 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 get uh, the adequate uh, profitability, and uh, that's all I I, I I had prepared for to share with you today. Thanks, obrigado, Thank you, uh, Francisco, and a very very up to date presentation. I, I have just been I'm just back from COP. I was there uh, last week, and. Methane is really the, the, the topic of the, the moment. There's a big stand with the, the new satellites information on, on methane. And I was, I was glad to see that you had a lot to say about direct measurement, which is obviously something that is required for our industry because so, much of, so, much, so many of the emissions are actually estimated. So before, before we go, go to, the, to the debate, uh, I'll, I'll ask our final uh, participant for, for, for his talk, and that is Juter from Transpetro. He's graduated in mechanical engineering uh, with a master in production engineering and an MBA in business management. He has over two years of experience in the operations, projects, and industrial processes optimizations area, um, uh, 20 years, uh, 14 of them in Transpetro, where he has taken a, a series of managing roles, managing gas pipelines, oil pipelines, rights of way, engineering, both inland and in marine terminals. And today he's responsible for integrated logistics solution uh, area of uh, Transpetro, where he's responsible for many studies in this field and also for the Transpetro's energy contracts in the open energy market. Uh, Juteru, the floor is yours. Welcome and very nice to share this table with you. Hello, everybody. I'll share my presentation.
Okay, can someone give me a thumbs up when it's visible? Yes. Okay. So, uh, we are here to talk about the contribution of the, the, the pipeline industry to the, 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 the emissions uh, goals we have. And to talk about Transpetro in Brazil. Uh, Transpetro is the, the full subsidiary, uh, is a full subsidiary of Petrobras, Brazilian main oil company. And we, we are its logistics, logistics uh, company. We are, we are responsible for operating uh, over uh, all these, 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 uh, these equipment and, and installations. 28 uh, marine terminals, 21 Should inland... That, Jutter, I'm really, I'm, I'm really sorry to interrupt you. I could see your presentation, but now it has disappeared. And it seems like other people are also okay. not seeing it. So if you can try to reshare it, I appreciate it. Sure. Let's share it again. Please give me another thumbs up. Thank you, Francisco. And uh, we are responsible for uh, operating uh, 28 marine terminals, 21 terrestrial uh, inland terminals, uh, 20 truck bases, uh, 540 tanks of uh, many products, uh, petroleum, uh, even ethanol. and. 45 LGP spheres. We operate from our uh, control center here in, in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, we remotely operate over uh, 7,000 kilometers of oil pipelines. We still operate over 5,000 kilometers of gas pipelines. We are in, in the middle of a process uh, of handover uh, uh, of the operation of these gas pipelines to, to tag. NTS and TAG uh, have bought the Brazilian gas pipelines uh, owned by Petrobras. And uh, the NTS part uh, has already been turned over to, to them. And TAG is in the middle of this process. But meanwhile, we, we still operate these over 5,000 kilometers and some 92 uh, city gates, six compression stations, and we have 51 uh, emergency response centers, uh, uh, which is to say we, we have a, a, a well-spread structure all around Brazil, mainly concentrated uh, in the coastline, of course, because uh, in Brazil, the, the, all the major cities uh, are in the coastline, all, all the, the main uh, industrial activity, uh, concentrated uh, in, in the coastline and in the southeast and in the south regions, but also in, in the northeast and in, in, in the Amazonic uh, basin. So we are talking about uh, an oil company. And uh, even if we, we are, uh, even if our, our main product uh, is oil, uh, we have a, a responsibility to, to, to operate these pipelines and these terminals in the most effective way. We have a, a, a clear environmental responsibility to do it in the most effective way. So uh, in, in this case, what I'm trying to, to, what I bring to you is the example of one of these pipelines uh, named Osbra. Osbra is uh, for stands for Olho Duto, São Paulo, Brasília, uh, the pipeline that connects the state of São Paulo, the city of Paulinha, where we have Replan, our biggest refinery. It is uh, Replan is Brazilian's biggest refinery. It it, it processes over sixty thousand cubic meters of oil per day. 
So uh, it, it's a big refinery, very complex, very modern. And a part of its production is injected through Osborne to five different bases, terrestrial terminals, uh, running across São Paulo State and Minas Gerais State and Goiás State until Brasilia, our capital. It, it has uh, uh, almost 1,000 kilometers of extension. Uh, it begins with uh, uh, a diameter of 20 inches in the final, in the final part between Senador Canedo and Brasilia. It operates in, in, in a 12 inches diameter, but mostly in 20. It has an, an operational capacity. Uh, we, we use this term according to the regulation uh, describing the, the, the practical capacity. It has the practical capacity of transporting over 800,000 cubic meters per month which is to say uh, it's a lot of, of product, uh, connected to five terminals and op operated by Transpetro remotely uh, from Rio de Janeiro. And we bring this example because if we were to, to replace Osborne, Osborne's capacity to uh, uh, a truck transportation system, uh, uh, Please, uh, this this, uh, this part of the, the animation is not wrong. Uh, uh, between Uberlândia and Brasilia, uh, the the trucks will, will not follow the the pipeline uh, course. Uh, it has a road here, but we would have a, a number, of, a great number of trucks uh, transporting these products up to Ribeirão Preto, Uberaba, Uberlândia. Senador Canedo and Brazilian. It would be converting the, the 800,000 cubic meters per month. We would be talking about uh, 13,345 truck uh, voyages. Uh, uh, and and we're, we're talking about big trucks, trucks uh, with uh, 60 cubic meters capacity which would run uh, an amazing total of over 1,700 uh, 17 million kilometers per month because the trucks they need to go and then then come back so uh, every trip is counted twice at the cost to the burning of amazing uh, uh, almost 7 million liters per month of diesel Okay, of course, this is a, this is a, a rough calculation uh, using values uh, in, in average, but this is the, the size of the, 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 the diesel we, we, are, we are saving uh, and the emissions we are uh, uh, trying to save using this pipeline. So uh, a pipeline is not only a, a very efficient way of transportation because it's cheaper than the, the trucks or, or other ways or trains. Pipelines are very efficient because they, they, they help keeping out of the atmosphere a, 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 a huge amount of, of carbon. And one could ask, okay, you, you are not using trucks, but you may be burning oil to 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 on your engines but our, our pumps run on powered by by electrical engines so we 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 don't burn diesel or, or any other fuel and uh, the electricity that that feeds them uh, in average, it is a, a pretty clean energy because of Brazilian energy, energy matrix being as clean as it is. We, we have a, a, a large amount of this electricity being generated by plants, uh, another portion which is increasing uh, in, the last, in the last few years, uh, generated by natural gas, 
and so on. So we are surely uh, replacing uh, a great amount of, of diesel for, an, uh, for other forms of, of cleaner uh, energy. Another point is that uh, we, we use, we are very responsible about the, the amount of energy, energy we use. Uh, of course, energy, energy is one of the main costs we have for operating these pipelines. We have a total of over uh, 15,000 uh, HPs in, in our engines only for this pipeline. So we have to be extremely careful uh, how we use those engines, how we use those pumps, how we operate this pipeline. We are extremely responsible about that. And one of the things uh, that we do uh, in a constant basis in, in which we find very inter interesting for other pipeline uh, companies is that we, we, we estimate the energetical cost of every possible combination of pumps and every possible uh, combination of, of prices to the energy. We, we have uh, uh, different prices uh, uh, depending on, on the, the time of the day we use the pumps. So we, we run off the, all these combinations and we end up with a, a list from the uh, a ranking of uh, pumping arrangements since the the most effective uh, energy arrangement to the the higher cost and in a, in a monthly basis we we calculate uh, an, an indicator that we call uh, which is not easy to translate but to in, in portuguese uh, it, it measures the time we use the best pump arrangements. So every month we, 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 we gather with the operations people and we review the results, the, the, uh, the, the combination of the pumps used uh, during the month and we, we analyze and uh, we assure, we, we try to assure that uh, we we, we only use the best arrangements uh, really necessary for uh, that day, ensuring that we, we, we don't spend a, a, a most uh, expensive arrangement of, of, of pumps, of engines, uh, without the, uh, the strict necessity. And concluding, uh, this is a, a, a very, frequent question in the Brazilian uh, pipeline industry. Is there potential yet unexplored for the use of pipelines in Brazil? Do we have a, 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 a sufficient pipeline network? This, this map shows uh, our, our, our pipelines and we are combining everything we have. We are calling on, on gas pipelines, uh, slurry pipelines, uh, oil pipelines, and all of these combined, we, we have this matrix of, of pipelines. So, okay, but uh, when, we, we, when we analyze the, 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 the means employed to, to move Gasoline and diesel, for instance, all around Brazil, we, we come to the conclusion that only 8% of this transportation is today being made by pipelines. 22% is being made by, by marine traffic, which is okay too, because we have a, a long coastline and uh, it's a very efficient transportation way too, but not as a pipeline. We have 32% of these products being transport, transported by train, which is a little less fine. And amazing, 38% uh, of all the gas and diesel 
uh, in Brazil being transported by trucks. If we would, if we were able to see the these this traffic in the map, the map would be all colored by by a child maybe, but uh, trying to to fill all the cities of the states, capillarizing the distrib distribution of these products all over Brazil, and pipelines maybe compared to to main arteries main energy arteries in a in a country and we have so few of them we have all these products running by other means less effective means the, uh, of transportation that are uh, uh, discharging a, a huge amount of co2 in the atmosphere we, which are not so uh, uh, energy efficient as the pipeline. So here we have another figure from the United States. Uh, here in Brazil, I, I, I've, I've launched everything we had, even slurry pipelines. In, in the United States, not to humiliate us, I, I brought only the, the oil pipelines. If we had here in this map the gas pipelines, uh, it would be all covered like a child trying to like a toddler trying trying to, to color a picture and we have a huge 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 network of pipelines and uh, we can't avoid asking couldn't we have more petrobras has the the pipelines necessary uh, for for its operation uh, it's happy with them we have a few projects okay but uh, uh, petrobras cannot be the only player in this market. Okay, NTS and TAG have bought the, the gas pipelines, but wouldn't there be a market for other uh, transportation companies using pipelines with new projects trying to interiorize this, these products? I leave you with this question. But uh, uh, one thing uh, I, I'm sure to, to say, pipelines are the best way of transportation for long distances and huge volumes uh, and, and with pipelines we can transport energy in in, a, in the most secure efficient and clean way possible so even if if we are in transpetro and, and petrobras in, a, in an oil industry we have a responsibility to do it in in the most efficient way okay thank you all Thank you very much, Jutter. And we do not have much time for, for, for questions. So what I'm going to do is going to make all the three questions at once. And I'm going to send to each of you for your final remarks on the questions and also your final comments for the, for the panel. So, so we have questions around the role of natural gas as uh, storage and as a backup for the, the energy systems, in particular, when you have uh, hydro energy as we have in, in Brazil. We also have questions on uh, the role of CCUS and whether the national agency is gonna stimulate that in, in Brazil. And finally, we have uh, comments and questions on so can we understand that pipelines are really the low carbon way of transporting energy for, for the future? And what are the challenges for, the, for, for having and holding pipelines in Brazil? And I was listening to Juter and I was wondering how much pipelines would be more uh, economic uh, if we had a price of carbon on the displacement of um, emissions from, from other uh, routes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, give the the words for everyone. I, my name is Viviana Coelho. I presented everyone. I didn't present myself. I'm Viviana Coelho from Petrobras, uh, a head of climate in the company. I'm gonna pass the word for Eloisa for for her comments on the questions and also her final remarks. So I'll make brief comments to to be able to to leave uh, keep the, leave the floor for everybody. Uh, the energy sector is already very renewable, as I said, since quite a while, right? I believe for, for the past 10 or, or maybe a little bit more years, 
the energy planning has considered emissions in what is one of the directives, the PDE, the uh, 10, our 10 year expansion plan has a specific chapter on uh, emissions and the decree that uh, regulates the national policy on, on climate change specific, uh, specifically says that uh, 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 our energy long-term plan uh, can be considered our sector plan for uh, uh, climate change regarding energy. Uh, so the, the, the whole planning already, when, when we do the planning, uh, we already consider energy efficiency, energy security, mitigating emissions, of course, as well as uh, uh, affordability for the whole population. So uh, all those things are already considered, have already been uh, considered. Uh, uh, moving very quickly for the efficiency of, of pipeline, I would say that's an opportunity. Uh, it, uh, uh, it's an opportunity uh, that pipeline operators should explore. Uh, Viviana mentioned carbon pricing. The key, the key aspect of carbon pricing is not the price itself. It's to correct. It's to give the correct incentives. We are putting price in something that now uh, we don't know the value. We, we uh, emissions now, if they are free, operators, everybody, they don't include them in our economic analysis, in our cost. But it is a cost for society. So the idea of carbon pricing is to correct incentives to allow for companies, governments, and the whole society to, to consider the emission costs in their economic decisions. And this, again, we already saw that efficiency and, and, and uh, is a key, a key aspect of pipeline transportation. I believe uh, uh, once we combine the the, the, uh, the perspectives and the efforts of climate change, if we can agree on a correct price allocation, it is a very good opportunity for the pipeline sector. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eloisa. We are actually running out of time and we're completely collecting time from the next session already. So I'm just gonna ask Francisco and Jutri if you can make like a one, very quick remarks so we can close up. Absolutely. Thanks, Viviana. Uh, I would um, strongly say that uh, pipelines is the co most cost-efficient way to transport energy by far. And one, one figure, when we compare how to transport energy uh, as uh, electrons, uh, electricity is uh, between 20 and 200 times more expensive than transporting that same energy, amount of energy through uh, gas pipelines. Obrigado. Regal, thanks. Thank you very much. Jutter? Yes, I, I would say that I agree totally with you. If we have ways of, of uh, making people pay more for, for less efficient ways of transporting uh, and, and including that on the prices of the goods, uh, we would have a, a, a very good uh, reason to, to, to really try harder and, and, and use uh, most economic ways. Thank you very much for the three of you. It was a, a pleasure to share the panel with you. Thank you every, uh, everyone in the audience and I hope you have a nice real pipeline. Thank you, IBP. Have a good conference.